down. More than 70% of New Yorkers want to give judges more discretion. So you know, since bail reform was passed in um, 2019, they've already made some tweaks to it, and the kind of the public is pushing for, for more tweaks. So now what the state will do is pass extenders, but will still function. Good afternoon, uh, Senator Kruger. Uh, why didn't we do this bill last Friday when everybody was already here? The governor only handed it to us today, this afternoon even. It's, it's unfortunate that we couldn't have passed that last week. There's nothing in there that couldn't have been voted on on Friday. Governor Kathy Hochul issuing the statement on the ongoing budget negotiations, saying in part, New Yorkers are concerned about public safety, the rising cost of housing, and ensuring high quality schools for all of our kids, and any budget deal must make progress on these core issues. I have been negotiating in good faith with the legislature, but it is clear that there is more work to be done before we reach an agreement, end quote. And if no deal is reached by the April 10th deadline, state workers across the board will not receive pay. Well, it's getting a little harder to make ends meet on the road as gas prices have now jumped once again. Now we're now paying about 346 per gallon on average in western New York after they had dropped to 336 by the end of last month. Still, prices are looking much better than they did in June of last year when they hit an all time high of 490 a gallon. Well, the recent surge in prices came on the heels of OPEC Plus announcing that it will be slashing oil production by more than a million barrels a day in May. But that's only expected to catalyze fuel prices increasing. As we get into the spring and summer months, gas prices typically rise for a few reasons. Gas prices are going to go up because there's higher demand in the summertime, plus there tends to be more regulation on the content of gasoline. Well, high gas prices may not be the only thing to slow your summer travel this year. The demand for passports is sky high, meaning that if you need to travel overseas, you'll need to get one as soon as possible. The U.S. State Department says passport applications are almost 40 percent over the last year. That, coupled with pandemic related backlogs, has led to wait times of up to 13 weeks in some cases. We've been seeing a lot of people coming in, especially for international travel. It has definitely picked up from the margins that we saw 200 percent. Western New York is now one step closer to legalizing cannibal, cannabis sales. Now, businesses that were stuck in limbo due to a lawsuit now have their licenses to sell. The state issued the first round of cord licenses to four Western New York shops today. Two are based in Buffalo. One is in West Seneca and the fourth is in Rochester. Now, we're told if store owners have a space ready to go, they can start selling as soon as this summer. And until then, they can sell in pop-up shops or via delivery. Meantime, the state is cracking down on shops that sell cannabis illegally. We have been working constantly, a uh, you know, small team, but working constantly across the state to ensure that the you know, uh, continued operation of these illicit shops uh, comes to a close. According to the Office of Cannabis Management, we are on track to see general license applications open up by the end of this year. Driving or walking, see and be seen. New York is taking new steps to protect your family on the road. The Department of Health kicking off Distracted Driving Awareness Month today by launching this media campaign. It's aimed at raising awareness of just how dangerous distracted driving and walking can be. According to a study done by the University at Albany's Rockefeller College in 2021, Distracted driving was a factor in one in 10 deadly crashes and a quarter of crashes were people where people were hurt. And last year, about one in five drivers reported talking or typing on the phone while driving and almost 30% said that they read text messages while driving. At 11.08, let's take a look at some of tonight's top stories. Two people are dead at JFK International Airport in New York after a construction accident late this morning. Now, Port Authority officials say that two workers got trapped in a trench under a construction rubble. About 60 firefighters worked to free them from the trench, but the workers died at the scene. The Port Authority says that it will conduct a thorough investigation. Carson Briere has now been kicked off his college hockey team. Mercyhurst University says that it has removed him from the team nearly three weeks after he was caught on camera pushing a wheelchair down the stairs of a crowded bar in Erie, Pennsylvania. Both Briere and the other student with him in the video face charges including criminal mischief and disorderly conduct. Mercy Flight is expanding service to both Orleans County and the town of Hamlin. 
The state health department has approved their application to take over Central Orleans volunteer ambulance services. Now, Mercy Flight says that they were already able to hire former COVA employees. And members of the crew who will helm the first moon mission in five decades were revealed on Monday. The astronauts are NASA's Reed Wiseman, Victor Glover and or Glover rather, Christina Cook and Jeremy Hansen of the Canadian Space Agency. Today's announcement queues up training for their historic lunar flyby, which is set to take off in November 2024. The mission is expected to last about 10 days. Up next, we're looking into the future to see the next acts coming to the stage at Shays. The thriller is set to come to the Queen City for the 2023-2024 season. Plus, when you'll be able to start scrolling around the streets of Buffalo. And I'm 7 Problem Solver Michael Schwartz. A Niagara County business owner's Facebook hacked, and now it's impacting her company. That story coming up tomorrow morning on the next 7 Problem Solvers, only on Good Morning Buffalo at 6.30. popular summer events in the Queen City is gearing up for this year. Slow Roll Buffalo rolled out its schedule for this year and tonight at the Broadway Market. The community bike riding series is celebrating its 10th anniversary this year and there's only 27 themed rides every Monday from May to October. It's a challenge to not repeat um, and to not repeat locations. Um, a lot of times it's just because locations are so fun you want to go back. Um, but just to spread it out. A lot of our themes and our, and our things are, are topical. So Buffalo's changing, Buffalo's evolved, Buffalo has new issues, and that gives us new subject matter or new issues to highlight. Slow Roll says its mission is to provide an inclusive atmosphere for people to connect across communities. The first Slow Roll of the year will be on May 1st. be only a quarter away through the 2023 year, but theater lovers in Western New York already have their eyes on this fall and beyond. Just a few hours ago, Shea's Performing Arts Center unveiled which shows will be coming to town for the 2023-2024 season, and our Sydney Orr was there as they gave us a sneak peek at what's to come. That's right. In lesson, I have to admit, I haven't made it to a lot of musicals in my lifetime, but the way they line up for this Broadway season is looking. I may just have to get on board because these are truly shows you won't want to miss. You'll stay up till this dump shines like the top of the Chrysler building. It's the hard knock life started out pretty hard for Annie, but for all the theater lovers here in Western New York, things just got a whole lot better. Um, it's super exciting. There's so many new shows that are coming. To feel the electricity in a room and share that, there's nothing like it. The Five Star Bank 2023-2024 Broadway season at Shea's Buffalo Theater has some spectacular shows on the horizon, like Mrs. Doubtfire, Moulin Rouge, Girl from the North Country, Funny Girl, Les Mis, Mamma Mia, MJ the Musical, and Annie, some of which will be teching and launching right here in Buffalo. It's always very exciting to launch a national tour from our city. Mrs. Doubtfire will be joining us about three to six weeks before the show opens, and the actors will be in town, the creative team, they will be all throughout our facilities. They'll be experiencing the city of Buffalo while they're in town. And a lineup like this not only brings great talent, it brings great business. The New York State Tax Credit Program actually encourages production companies to hold pre-tour activities and shows. The show comes to town for three or four weeks and it generates an enormous economic impact. Uh, they spend hundreds of thousands of dollars here. We get to see them working in our communities, taking advantage of all of our assets. And they love coming to Buffalo and they love coming to Shays. And how could you not when this series of shows has something for everyone to love? I just think it's incredibly important to have such a woman empowerment show going across the country, especially in a time like this, that also not only empowers women, but has an intersectionality between women of all colors, shapes and sizes and identities. Season tickets are on sale now and Mrs. Doubtfire will lead off the lineup in September and there will be more shows through June of 2024. And everyone from the seats to the stage can't wait. I can't. I can count so many times after getting off stage and meeting fans or people after and they were like, that really touched me. And I think stuff like that keeps me going and keeps us going as mm -hmm. artists because yeah. we're able to connect and share our experiences through this art. People are impacted that way. So I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to maybe seeing Moulin Rouge. I like the movie. I like the music. I feel yeah. like it'd be a good vibe. Yeah. That one was pretty cool.